Feast your eyes, everybody. I can guarantee you're not gonna see me dressed up like this again. Hey everyone, it's Oktoberfest season, and uh, I've known vaguely of the fact for the past couple of years that there is a polka band in town. It's comprised partly of people from the Spokane British Brass Band where I play. Um, and so I figured it might be worth trying out this year, and it turns out they were in need of a tenor voice. So here I am in this crazy getup playing this crappy Soviet thing to keep it semi-authentic. By the way, I spent like an hour last night working on these valves. That was a waste of an hour of my life. This getup was also one heck of an IQ test. Uh, that was a fun morning activity for me, and I still haven't figured out what to do with these strings here, and I'm just waiting to be told that I've put on all of this wrong. I honestly think I'm gonna put my regular suspenders in my backpack just so I have them, just in case. I think these later hosing would fit me if I were to develop a proper beer belly, but hey, at least I get these weird long sock things that go all the way up to my thighs. This hat also does a very good job of messing up my hair, but not staying on my head, which is unfortunate because I don't want people seeing my messed up hair. At any rate though, I think this should be a lot of fun. This is my first time doing this sort of music and it's really been a blast. We're playing kind of a mix of polka stuff and pop stuff that turns into polka stuff or even jazz stuff, heaven forbid. And so we've got quite a number of gigs over the next couple of months just around town, you know, playing at breweries and whatnot. If you recall, I did a video with the Lilac Brass Quintet, which you can find up in the card, where we played at a brewery really close by, just a few blocks from my house. We're playing there again, and it's a similar sort of setup where we've got a four-hour event and three-hour long sets. So, holy smokes, I am ready to die today, and next weekend, and so on.
after three hours. I don't know that my chops are. That pretty much took every last bit of anything out of them. Some people listen to some of our music, as one generally expects from things like this, and the turnout was pretty high. Sounds like we had a few hundred people circulating through the brewery uh, during our gig. That was a lot. Once again, just like when I did those three brass quintet sets on French horn. You know, three hours of playing punctuated by small breaks is, uh, is nothing to sneeze at. The food, after the second set, like last time, definitely did help and kind of gave me a little bit of a second wind. Um, but yeah, after all that ripping on polka and pop tunes, it really does start to get to your chops eventually. Just like last time, I really need to stop playing with my face, you know, doing all this to get the notes to speak. It's not good. I really just need to be taking a nice big breath and trusting the notes to come out. But unfortunately, I'm not very good at reminding myself to do that when my chops are tired or when I in general, I'm stressed. It's tough to take a big full breath and actually use it properly. So I guess that's something to work on for next time. Next week, same gig, same time, same everything. Should be fun. Hey everybody, quick note from present day Sam. I hope you enjoyed gig number one and I hope you enjoy the five gigs yet to come. But on that topic, across six different gigs, you can imagine I recorded a lot of footage of our band. In fact, the total count was about four hours of us playing. And somehow, through a rather significant effort, I had to find a way to condense that and my B-roll and my speaking footage into a vaguely digestible one-hour video for you all. I hope you enjoy that, because it already took a lot of effort as is. But the trouble with that is it also required a lot of cuts, both within and of entire pieces. We played 20 pieces as a polka band, and you're only hearing about half of those or a little bit more than half in this video for a variety of reasons. Again, I didn't want things to get too redundant, but I also wanted to trim out the best highlights for you and give those to you in this special. But if you want full uncut access to all 20 pieces, at least one full take of each and sometimes two takes of certain pieces, then go to patreon.com slash samuelplaysbrass. You can find the link in the description of this video or in the pinned comment, or since I've read it off to you, you can just go to your URL bar and type it in. If you go to the $5 tier or up, you'll have access to behind the scenes content on this channel. And I'm trying to do more of that as I vlog more of my gigs and do some longer form videos. There's gonna be a lot of behind the scenes footage that doesn't make the initial cut to the channel. So supporting the channel on Patreon is not only a wonderful way to give back to what it is that I do here and ensure bigger and better content, but it also gives you access to some behind the scenes peaks. Once again, patreon.com slash samuelplaysbrass. Check the video description or the pinned comment, but for now, we'll return to the video. Well, you know what they say, another day, another dollar. Today's goals are to breathe better, hydrate better, and stay on the beat better. Let's get after it. same brewery as last time. I am really thankful the weather is a lot milder today than it was last weekend. I sweated up an absolute storm last week, so very thankful for some cooler weather today. And once again, we're just gonna try and breathe better and not use our faces to play so much because my chops were genuinely rather messed up for several days after this gig last time. So we're gonna shoot for better this time. Let's do it.
Guess what? It's still hot out, I'm still very sweaty, and I still got very, very chalked out. I don't think it's possible to avoid at this point. I was convinced that today I was going to do a better job with my breathing and less muscular tension in the facial region. I don't know if that didn't happen or if I just did it as well as I could have the first time around and so this time wasn't any better. This time was worse, <laughs> if anything. Um, it was rough straight from the first set. I don't know what, but like my chops have been a little messed up all day. Uh, I'm definitely not gonna be playing anymore tomorrow. And then on Monday, of course, I have my trumpet lesson at university and I have orchestra rehearsal, but we're gonna keep the playing as minimal as possible this week because man, seems like I need a break. Alrighty, welcome to gig number three. We're about to be on our way straight from work as these things often very chaotically go. Should be a fun time. We're playing for a different brewery this time. I played for them uh, back in the winter season with some of the same folks. Uh, and you can check that video out up in the card if you want to. That's the big 50 minute, you know, Christmas special I put out last year. Uh, but today we should just be doing a nice chill Oktoberfest gig. Should be fun. So I'll see you there. <laughs>
definitely been a very long day and I'm definitely looking forward to bed right about now but that was a very fun gig nonetheless. I forgot how much more I enjoyed the atmosphere of playing for a comparatively small and cute little brewery versus a big giant beer hall just clamoring full of swaths of people coming in and out and getting drunk and having a jolly old time. That of course has its place, that's not so much my vibe. Uh, I enjoyed this a little bit more so, being a you know smaller, more contained sort of audience. And of the audiences we've had so far, tonight's audience was the most receptive and appreciative and generally complimentary of what we brought to them as performers and as musicians. As far as the actual gig went, I would say it went reasonably well. It was definitely a relief to only play for an hour and a half. We split that up into two 40 minute sets with a little 10 minute intermission in between. And it was a lot of fun. We, you know, we got through our set and we chose a couple more to recycle and we ended with the same tune we started with and we had the, you know, the the head of the bar, you know, sing with us for that tune. It was really great. It was a very charming experience. I think the band played quite well as a whole. It definitely was nice not to have to play Fortissimo to hear ourselves and synergize, so we were better in that regard. I did feel the tempo dial turned down like five or ten percent. I'm not exactly sure why that was, but nonetheless, for the sake of a slightly more chill gig, I was okay with it, even if it felt like I was pushing against the tempo sometimes and trying to make things go faster when that was a little bit out of my control. In general, I'm working on getting out of my head when I perform. Uh, I try obviously not to talk about or show too much of that on here, but over the past year or so, it's become increasingly challenging to stay out of my own head and stay sort of in the present moment in the music during performances. It's intensified over the last year and especially the last few months, so having reached somewhat of a boiling point and being disappointed with recent performances, I'm working on just like I said, taking a step back, I walk up and come hell or high water, I move the valves, I, I move the slide and whatever comes out, that's what comes out. Honestly, I think that attitude alone is freeing enough that I played better tonight than either of the previous nights. Although, of course, there were factors like the fact that we were taking things at a slightly easier tempo and that we were playing slightly more softly. That Soviet baritone drives me just a little crazy. I really thought about bringing my euphonium to this gig instead. I might still try that because we do still have a couple gigs on the list because that thing, uh, the intonation's not quite there all the time. My trombone I obviously have no issues with. It's my beloved Con 88H that I'm hoping to get several more decades of use out of, so I'm glad to be putting it to good use at the very least. Anyway, 
I'm about to head off to bed, but that's one more gig crossed off. And we are off to gig number four. This one's a bit more of a commute than the last three we did. First two were just up the road for me. The third was a little farther, something like a maybe a 15 or 20 minute drive from home, although I was going straight from work, so it was a little less than that. This one, we're actually heading over the Washington-Idaho border to Coeur d'Alene. We're gonna play in a little brewery there. I'm really looking forward to it. it. Seems like a good environment. And I am all pumped and ready to go. So let's do it. convenient that my tank happened to need filling right as I was driving into Idaho because gas is actually a little cheaper here than back home. Just a quick pit stop for us and then we will be on our way to the gig. is bigger than I thought. This is like another actual beer hall, like the one I played for for my first couple of gigs. Should be interesting. Let's see what we get up to. Thank you. 
was one heck of a gig. None of us realized it was going to be outdoors, and had we known, that would have perhaps informed some of our decisions leading up to the gig a little bit differently, such as myself maybe wearing a flannel instead of a short sleeve button down. But nonetheless, we braved the high 50s windy temperatures. They weren't too bad, it was just the, the wind was a little bit annoying. Uh, and there was a little bit of smoke blowing in from, you know, the fire pits stationed around. But nonetheless, it's a great establishment. It was a lot of fun playing for the folks there. They were quite receptive despite us kind of just playing into the mist. That's always an occupational hazard of outdoor gigs. But the people were really cheering us on and having a good time, which was good to see. Uh, some little kids were dancing around in front of our tent. It was really, really cute, really wholesome. Great experience overall. I had some dinner there, obviously, before I got going and hit the road, and that was great. Their food is, is good stuff, that's for sure. And some of my bandmates were still socializing, but after some food and some chit-chat, I figured I needed to get home. And it turned out it was the perfect opportunity to do so at that particular time because I got, as you see here, this sunset time-lapse footage. Another thing is, while last time it seemed like we were kind of on the back end of the beat, slowing everything down 5-10%, this time, it was the complete opposite, and I don't know why that was, but we all seemed to be pushing through the tunes a lot more, to the point that it was a little reckless and dangerous sometimes how fast we were going, and I really felt myself just barely hanging on to the beat, but we were pushing the tempo the whole time. It was like we really wanted to be done. Uh, of course, part of that was being outside in the less than ideal outdoor conditions, but nonetheless, last time it was really chill. This time, it was really on the edge. Very different vibe. So it turns out I actually need to go over the whiteboard and rearrange some things because we not only have one gig left, but we have two that we are preparing for. So that's going to be interesting. We're going to have to add in a few new tunes for those, so we'll work on that. Uh, but nonetheless, Vantage Point, as of tonight, is done. Guten Abend. Heute, wir haben Oktoberfest gig Nummer 5. And I apologize, I took two years of German in high school, my freshman and sophomore year, which were now six and seven years ago, and I promptly proceeded to never speak German again. But, like I said, today is gig number five. We have another spot out in the valley that's doing an Oktoberfest celebration, which we've been hired to play for. And things are a little bit different this time. You might have heard our tubist Matt cranking away on the last few gigs, and he's awesome. But today, he can't make it. Actually, our final two gigs, he cannot make it to either of them. So, we are inviting on Pat, our bass trombonist. I know, Matt and Pat. It's kind of nuts. Well, if you thought Matt was good, Pat is... Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, I'm not a very good bass trombonist, personally. I can rip every now and then. But to play actual tuba bass lines on bass trombone is way too much coordination between three disparate mechanisms. Four, really. Because you got your tongue, you got your slide hand, you got your thumb, and you got your middle finger. Totally a weird combination. And it's... It's very tricky for me, but Pat, oh my gosh, he holds the fort down. Uh, I don't want to hype him up too much, so, you know, no pressure to Pat or anything, but he's really awesome. But the bottom line there is that changes the tone of the group. When you go from a big fat tuba, probably a six-quarter C if I had to guess, down to a bass trombone that projects straight out and has, you know, like a ten-inch bell or so, you really change the tone of the ensemble as a whole. And that Soviet baritone I've been using, aside from it being a little bit tough to play and kind of stuffy, I thought maybe it wasn't really appropriate tone-wise for the ensemble. I can put some edge on the sound, but it's a great Herculean sort of effort. And so I brought out what I thought would be a nice little super weapon for this gig. This is a short style Amati valve trombone that I restored a few months back. I still need to edit that footage like all of my other restorations, obviously. But I brought this to the rehearsal thinking, oh, you know, we'll, we'll match sound because this is a trombone and Pat's playing a trombone and we, we should be closer to matching. And I promptly realized this was not the super weapon I intended it to be. This thing did not play nearly as well as I remembered. I think when I was testing it on its own, it was just fine for things like jazz. 
But when I brought it to an actual live rehearsal, I was realizing a lot of shortcomings. Certain notes don't speak nearly as well as others. The high register is something like that. I think it's a valve alignment issue, which means I can fix it. It's just frustrating because I thought I restored this thing and evidently it's not done. So after that little fake out, here's our actual super weapon for tonight, a British brass band baritone horn. This is the Yamaha 621. I actually reviewed this exact one a while ago and you can find that up in the card. This is a great instrument. It belongs to the Spokane Brass Band and they're letting me use it because all of their baritonists, I think, have personal 621s at this point, which is kind of crazy to think about. Of course, this is not merely as authentic and looks pretty different from anything else in the ensemble, aside from Alex's little E-flat horn that he pulls out in addition to his accordion and his trumpet. But honestly, this is a great, great, great playing instrument all the way from low to high. Great facility across the octaves, great technical uh, abilities. Unlike the other two, both the Soviet baritone and the valve trombone, those two both kind of stink on fast passages. So I'm really looking forward to using this on the gig. A big trouble with the Soviet baritone was there was a significant latency between me actually pressing the rotor and the rotor turning. Those rotors are not quite mechanically perfect, so to speak. So whenever I was trying to double tongue fast runs, my tongue would end up ahead of the valve movement and it would sound really bad. So this instrument is one that actually allows me to double tongue in time. So hopefully that'll work out. Alrighty, Los Gates. <laughs>
a bow on another day of great food, great folks, and great music. I am a little special in that, apparently, because today actually was a mat day, not a pat day. I don't know how I got that mixed up. Regardless, either of them can show up on any given day and kill it, so I'm not fussed. But yeah, I'm, I'm definitely glad I didn't bring the valve trombone. That would have been a little too edgy to try and blend with a tuba. The baritone, boy, what a what a moment of clarity for me. Gosh, playing that the, the Soviet baritone, as opposed to the British one I used on this gig, I didn't realize how much I was struggling until I picked up the baritone and started playing it and realized I was overplaying it. I was putting way too much energy into it. I was muscling way, way, way too much. I was cracking notes, overshooting them, just stupid things like that that really shouldn't happen. But because it's such an easy playing instrument, I actually have to dial back my approach a little bit and just trust that if I put some air into it, the notes will come out the way I want them to. I mean, when I reviewed the 621, I sang a lot of praise for it, and it's because it is one of the easiest playing low brass instruments I've ever played. Definitely a step up from whatever factory that, that Soviet baritone came out of. Regardless though, a lot of fun. Uh, rather smaller crowd this time, but they were very fun-loving and appreciative, so no complaints there. I also had a little bit of a revelation on the trombone as well, and it's the fact that I was playing with forward head posture. This ruins my trombone playing. Not only do my already short arms have less effective length when I crane my head forward, but it also just tires me out really quick. I can't take a good breath. I can't really play high if my neck's crane forward. It is bad. So today, finally, I got my neck in line with my spine, just let the bell set at kind of a natural, slightly lower angle, and things just finally fell into place and I wasn't getting quite so chopped out while playing trombone. That was a lifesaver. So after one week's respite, we have our final gig of the season. I'm looking forward to it. Today we have our final gig of the polka season, which is crazy to think about. I could have sworn we just started rehearsing yesterday, but it is the final gig. We're going up to a retirement center. So I think today we're gonna dial the energy back a little bit, unless I'm much mistaken. But nonetheless, it should be a lot of fun. There's not too much preamble for today, besides today is actually a Pat day, not a Matt day. So Pat's gonna be ripping on the bass trombone. And uh, without any further waffling, I will see you there.
What a season it has been. That was a lot of fun from start to finish. Once again, crazy to think it's over. It all kind of blew by like a whirlwind, and it's definitely been a very chaotic few weeks for me, as I don't usually take on many gigs in the months of September and October. But nonetheless, I had a ton of fun playing great music with great friends for great folks. This has been on my bucket list for a very, very long time, so I'm glad to have finally crossed it off. I'm glad I was able to document a little bit of the experience, and I hope you enjoyed following along with these Polka Chronicles. If you'd like to see more vlogs like this, you can check out the playlist in the top right corner in the card. But otherwise, until next time, we'll see you on the flip side. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you want to support the creation of bigger and better content on the Samuel Plays Brass channel, have your name featured right here, and a whole host of other perks and benefits, then please consider pledging your support at patreon.com slash samuelplaysbrass. For now, you can find more videos in the end screen cards to my left.